G'day ladies and gents and welcome to Cold Waters with Mags and welcome to a little bit of a special video for this one. Now before we get too far into this, I just want to put an apologies out. You may hear a little bit of fan noise in the background at the moment. It is 43 degrees here and I am not working in this office without a damn fan running. So I'll try and clean it up in post for you. So this is going to be a fairly special Cold Waters video. One of my subscribers, who goes by the name Twig46, left me a challenge on one of my videos for Cold Waters. Unrelated, but I have a Cold Waters request. Do a quick custom mission with one Kiev aircraft carrier, three Sierra, one Alpha, three Udaloy, and two Kara, and four helicopters, all set to aggressive, and the goal is to sink the aircraft carrier. I've tried this ten times and only did it once in a Los Angeles. Well, congratulations Twig46, your challenge is accepted. However, it wasn't quite hard enough. See, I've already played this mission twice, and I completed it first shot both times. Both times with all of the ships that you listed, all set to aggressive, with the same number of helicopters, and using the Los Angeles class. The first time I did it without changing any of the weather or time settings, and just leaving it set to the default deep ocean. Picking up the noisy Kiev on passive sensors was relatively easy, hit it with torpedoes, dove to a thousand feet, disappeared. So the first thing I did is I moved the map location to just off the coast of Greenland, I think it is now. The major difference here, the majority of this particular area is give or take around 250 feet deep. So I only have 250 feet worth of maneuvering space. That's it. No deep dives to a thousand feet to avoid contact. I'm going to be stuck relatively close to the surface at all times ran the mission up again and was still able to destroy the Kiev. The problem is the Kiev is very noisy so it's very easy to pick up on passive sensors and if I do a standard torpedo sweep like you've seen me do uh, probably a hundred times in cold waters at this point, firing the torpedoes in a widespread away from the submarine and then turning them back into the target so when the torpedoes are detected they're coming from multiple different directions and the enemy ships all fire on the torpedoes and are nowhere near where I am, you can take it out relatively easy. So this time I played with the weather settings. As I'm sure you've noticed, we're in a fairly severe storm. So we're in 250 feet of water. There is no thermal layer. The ambient noise in the water is 108 decibels. Now 108 decibels is louder than the noise that the Los Angeles class actually makes when it's in silent running. So none of the Soviet ships are going to be able to detect me on passive sonar. But that's actually not a problem for them because they're set to aggressive, so they're all using active sonar at all times. However, what it does do is limits my effective passive sonar range against submarines, particularly the Sierra and the Alpha class, to maybe five kiloyards at tops. Now I can't use my active sonar because it immediately gives away my location and I will have every single one of those ships that we put into this particular challenge firing torpedoes at my exact location pretty much straight away. Now this 108 decibels also limits the effectiveness of my passive sonar against surface ships. I don't think I'll be able to detect the Kiev outside of 8, maybe 10 kiloyards in total, unless she's running at flank speed. And even then, I'm still going to have to be inside of 15 kiloyards to be able to find her. So, the blind man is commanding a blind submarine in only 250 feet of water versus an angry and aggressive Russian fleet in hopes of sinking their flagship. This should be quite a bit of fun. Now, I'm just going to set... We might use a little bit of time acceleration here as well, because this is going to take a long time. This is going to be a much slower engagement than you used to. So how do exactly do you detect and destroy these submarines? Well, you're seeing part of it on screen here at the moment. I can't use my active sonar to locate the enemy ships. It will give away my location. But I can use their active sonar to try and track them. I am going to need to identify the Kiev before I sink it, however. So I'm going to have to work out how to do that. I have a bit of a thought here, but I just want to move positions and time a little bit before we go through it. Now, for those of you who have been who, who like the cinematic approach, like seeing the 3D external views, unfortunately, you're probably not going to get too many of them in this kind of an engagement. 
You see, the 3D external views in cold waters only work when you have a 95% solution on target. Essentially, you've got to know exactly where they are on sonar before they will render in the 3D space and you can actually see them. To complete this mission in this situation, I'm going to have to sink ships that have 0% solution. I'm not going to be able to directly detect them at all, and I still have to locate them and sink them. So for those of you who have been uh, complaining about the 3D views, how it's unrealistic and how you should do everything from the map, and, well, you're going to get your wish, because this is exactly how I'm going to have to play this one, because using the maps and looking and uh, working out exactly how to sink these ships directly without being able to see them is the only way you can actually complete this mission in this particular configuration. Alright, so what I'm doing here, just while we're using the time acceleration to move ourselves forward, is trying to close in and isolate the active sonar emissions from the enemy ships and the enemy subs. Now you'll hear there's two tones. One of these tones is for submarines, one of these tones is for surface ships, although the surface ships do have some variance in their sonar sounds as well. So trying to pick out which ones is which can be difficult, but it gives you some idea already of what is spread through this area. Now the important thing to note is when you're dealing with Russian submarines, particularly group ones that have been grouped up, such as the Sierras have, there will be only one submarine that is actively pinging. The other two will be dead silent in the water and they will be listening to the active returns from the Sierra that is pinging for targets. The Alpha may also be pinging, but it could also be silent, listening to the pings off the surface ships. And as a general rule, the surface ships themselves will always actively ping. So it looks like, judging from the angles on these sonar pings, the group is moving southeast. And the pings are getting quieter, so some of these ships are moving further away. So they're not close, they are slowly making the distance. Now it is important to notice that the ambient noise in the water will also affect the effectiveness of active sonar, but in a much more limited capacity. Right, so time acceleration off. Right, and here's the part where I'm going to freak the shit out of all of the Cold Waters players, because what I'm going to do now is try and locate our aircraft carrier old school style. We're going to use the periscope. Now, I have to com visually confirm or confirm via active sonar, or passive sonar rather, I have to identify the, key of, uh, the, uh, the, the Kiev before I sink it. The reason for this is the way the cold water scores its ships, if you don't detect the ship that you sink, that you have not got any confirmation on what it is and you have not identified, which I'm probably not going to be able to in these conditions, even if you sink it, it's still considered undetected. So I can't do that. That would break the, uh, the rules of the challenge. I have to sink the Kiev and it has to be a confirmed kill. So I have to identify it. Now, if I use active sonar, I am dead. If I use the radar, I am dead. However, in these stormy conditions, the periscope is much less likely to be detected. It can still be detected by radar, but it has a much lower percentage chance. And it's the best option that I have for locating these targets, but I have to be as fast about this as I possibly can. So periscope up, and straight. Okay, let's start seeing if we can locate our targets. Now this isn't, there we go. All right, we've tagged one and we've got another one there, so that's two. Now while we've got the periscope up, we may as well see whether or not we can tag
everything. I'm just trying to watch the horizon line above the waves looking for shadows. That's an island. That's definitely an island, that's an island, or an iceberg, one of the two, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, wait for the wave. And that that's why the the radar isn't so effective in a storm. There we go, there's one. That's probably one of the utilized then. I'm pretty sure that was my aircraft carrier back there by the way, so I think we've done. I'm just mainly looking to see if we can detect any of the other escorts. Okay, so we got the Kiev, we got two Udaloys, and we got the Kara. Beautiful. All right, so we've identified our target. Now, the first thing you'll notice is as much as we've managed to identify them, we do not have a track on them, and this is the way that the periscope works. We now know that these ships are here and this location, but now the periscope is down, we do not get any additional updates on them. So we're going to have to track them, now knowing what locations they were all in at the point that I've had the periscope up, based on their movements on the sonar. Or based on the movements of their own active sonar, I should say. Now... Torpedo 1 is away. Torpedo 2 is away. And let's bring out the other side. Torpedo 3 and Torpedo 4. Now what I'm going to do is a search spread with these torpedoes. We're going to get them as wide as we possibly can in the water, just to get them away from our submarine before they are, uh, before the torpedoes are detected. And then we're going to fan them out and we're going to start tracking the active sonar pings of the ships that are currently pinging. Now, it's important to note that torpedoes themselves only have about 13 minutes from the time of launch to the time they expire, so I have to be able to hit any of the targets in that window. I've got 12 minutes and 25 seconds at the moment, and what I want to do is take out the Kiev and take out at least two of the escorts. Now, I can't take out all three of them because I only have four torpedoes, and the Kiev's going to take at least two to sink. But I'm not entirely sure which ones I'm going to find because as soon as these torpedoes are detected, these ships are going to start maneuvering. Right, there's torpedo four. Let's tweak that. Now, torpedo three can continue through. Turn off torpedo one. We'll leave Torpedo 2 for the moment and let them track. And you can see how I'm starting to build the spread. Alright. This is the other part about this particular video. If I don't edit this down, which I might end up doing afterwards, this is going to be very long and very slow, and there's gonna be a lot of waiting. And we're just under 11 minutes on the torpedoes. Torpedo 2 turned in. Now... Let's tweak up some of these. I want Torpedo 3 to go a little bit further south. There's a little bit less activity on the bottom side of this group. And everything seems to be heading north. Alright, 
now just adjusting the activation times for these because as soon as these torpedoes hit their waypoints they go active and I do want them actively pinging when they do I want the entire enemy fleet to suddenly hit or suddenly be hit by a whole bunch of active sonars all at once and make them panic hopefully they will do something stupid and it'll allow me to detect and work out which ones are which um, yeah let's set these all the surface tops are pretty close um, actually now that I think about it let's turn off the active sonars just for the moment let's let them all go active all right let's... no 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 come on come on come on come on come on stop that I should have turned the search patterns off. That's right, I can fix. There we go. There we go. And three just went active, so let's straighten three back up. Okay, that's better. Alright, so now we've got our direction of travel in our torpedoes. We now have our active detection cones. And we're going to leave them passive for the moment because I want them to close in see whether or not we can detect some of these ships before we go active first. Right, now the pings are close to three. Alright. Pings through one, so it should be in the path of one or two for the ship that's in the north Come left to zero eight and that's just to make sure the Los Angeles is perfectly straight in comparison to the torpedoes so we don't break a wire here because I can't afford to have a wire broken essentially what I'm doing here and we're pretty close on three so we'll adjust and wait for the pings to go through yeah Okay, you're in line. Essentially what I'm doing here is I'm using the wire guided torpedoes as long range passive sonar so I can detect the ships without being able to detect the ships and without giving away or risking giving away my ship's location. If any of the torpedoes are detected, well the enemy knows where a torpedo is, who cares? But they don't know where I am, they don't know where the launch ship is. There's two pings to the south, one of them appears to be continuing south. Now hopefully, four is in line for the Kiev now. Alright, what just happened? Torpedo in the water at three, torpedo in the water at three. Just three to track onto that torpedo. So what just happened then is the surface ship managed to detect our torpedo and has fired a counter torpedo in return at the location of the torpedo that was detected. Actually looking at that it looks like it detected four and it fired the torpedo at four. It may not have detected three. So three might still be in for a sneaky shot here.
three is locked on target. No, target tracked and acquired on a zero percent solution. We never actually detected it with any, and we have a countermeasure at one. So we just one, two countermeasure. Three has countermeasure deployed, so the torpedo is beautifully on track. We will just tweak it. Three has reacquired. One has reacquired, and one is reacquired and broken again. Three's close. Gun, fire control, gun sonar, noise maker, bearing one, one, one. So many countermeasures gun, down at three. Control, Two's acquired. Control, one has acquired. Gun, fire control, weapon, countermeasure, homing. One has disengaged. Impact. Torpedo 3 has hit target. Torpedo 1 has reacquired and is broken off again. I'm going to leave 2. Come on, stay straight. 2 seems to have the better track on the northern target, so I'm going to bring 1 down south because 4 has now acquired a target. 2 has impacted. One appears to now be free of the target lock and is continuing on course. Four is tracking and hopefully four's on the Kiev. In which case I still have two torpedoes for tracking the Kiev. Yep, four's gone and one has just acquired target. Let's relay those. I want to maneuver the submarine because that torpedo is coming through, but if I maneuver I might break the wire and I don't want to break the wire. Come on, hit it. Noisemaker, it's been tracked. Get him. Broke off again. Let's... Running out of time, time on this torpedo here at the moment. Impact. Los Angeles turning due south. Let's set depth to one fifty. And we're going to be clear of that torpedo. And we've still got two pings from down in that area. All right. And yes, that last torpedo did in fact hit the Kiev. So that is mission complete. We've managed to locate and sink the Kiev out of the center of the group and we did it without a 100% solution. Just a quick peek with the periscope and then using the active sonar against the 
uh, against the shipping group. But we're not out of the woods just yet. We've still got active sonar pinging us, so we cannot just leave the area. We need to get far enough away that they can no longer ping us before the game will actually let us exit with a victory. It doesn't matter how many times I sink one of these things, it's always a really nice feeling. Now we have to survive, and because I don't have a location on any of these enemy ships, surviving is going to be easier said than done. That ping to the north is sharp and different, that's a possible submarine. So we got the northernmost Udaloi, and we've got the rearmost Udaloi of the group, and we got the Kiev. So there's one more Udaloi, two Karas, the three Sierras, and the Alpha remaining. I reckon the two lighter pings coming from the east is a Udaloi and a Kara, or potentially both of the Karas. I reckon the northernmost ping is Sierra or the Alpha. And it's reasonably close too. And that's the end of the torpedo. Now, keep in mind, at this point, the entire enemy fleet knows that I'm here now. They don't know exactly where I am. They are likely trying to track onto the locations that they detected the torpedoes. But they are aware that I'm here, and they are now on full alert, and they are actively hunting for me. Which means, even though they don't know exactly where I am at this point, they are going to be moving towards my location, because they know the torpedoes came from the rear of the convoy. And the closer they get, the more likely it is that I'm going to get detected. This is the waiting game part. It's too far to the map borders. We have deeper water directly to the west. But that means putting my flank to the ships that are hunting me which will reduce my ability to detect them, not completely because I have the Toad Sonar Array, but still. While they're actively pinging me from behind, which I'm not particularly fond of the idea of. The only way I'm going to escape this, I'm going to have to sink the ships that are currently... Hang on, wait for that to go through again. One, two, three. Okay, we are no longer being pinged from the north. We're getting three pings directly from the east. So that's both the Karas and the Udaloi are now hunting. The Sierra or Alpha that was to the north has stopped actively pinging, and there was only two pings then. And there's the third ping, so it's pinging again. Alright, I'm going to do a little time acceleration here, I think. Just to speed up our movement south. See where these pings go, where are they hunting? Staying pretty consistent at this point. Oh, shit, 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 shit. 
Oh wow. 95% solution. Oh crap. Yeah, that's a Sierra. It's not actively pinging at all, and it did not detect me because of the ambient noise in the water. God, it really ran me over. Shit, I didn't mean to do that. Uh oh, and there's the counter launch. Um, God damn it. Turn back on target. Alright, counter measure is deployed. Actually, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Manual control, turn away. I nearly sunk myself then. The Sierra Mark 48, that one. Take it, take it. I will guide you in manually, but I am not releasing you to come back around and hunt me. Control, fine, we'll do it this way. I will manually guide you in. There we go. Oh! That was almost a massive F up. Oh no, 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 come on. Up, 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 balanced up. Crisis averted. I um, accidentally misfired a torpedo when I wasn't intending to. Then turned the torpedo back and nearly sunk myself. Deployed a countermeasure that wasn't needed that is now giving away my exact location, but I did manage to sink the Sierra that just scared the crap out of me. So that's one less Sierra to worry about. Um, yeah, I'm going to change the reload to a Moss due south. There is no way known that those ships did not hear that. That split second of cavitation as well, they definitely would have heard that. Come on, load the moss. What I'm going to do is fire the moss off to the northeast. Come right to one, seven, three, two, nine. Turn south, turn south, faster, faster, faster. Because they will be listening for me at this point in time. Sierra's noisy too on the bottom, but that's good because it's going to cover me. But I need to make them think I'm trying to escape out of the area. Alright, there we go, and... Um, that'll do. Alright, moss away. This might be a blessing in disguise. We've got moss in the water. 
we have the wreck of Sierra making a load of noise covering what little sound that we're making at this point, so... make this really look like a submarine. Let's get a two, or three rather. Right. Now one of these is from the far side of the ship. I think it's Torpedo 2 from the uh, from the port side so I have to be careful because it's wire is probably going to break I'm going to do the same thing again I'm going to send these torpedoes down the active sonar Send it down the active sonar ping. Uh, shit. Straighten up. There we go. And just see what they encounter. As both these torpedoes were launched and chased the moss for a little bit, it should look like the moss, which should sound like us running at flank speed, or at least high speed. Gun, fire control, weapon Round, go. And three's already acquired something. Shit, that was close. It was real close, all things considered. It should look like these torpedoes were convincingly launched from the location of the moss. So that's all three Utiloids down. So that's their sub hunters dealt with. Now, where are the Karas? Well, that narrows it down. So there are two pins to the south. Well, it could be both Karas. Yeah, it's quite possibly both Karas. that again. No, one of those sonar tones is slightly different to the other. That's not two Karas, that is a Kara and a submarine. So one of the Sierras or the Alpha is down here.
Come on. Where is it? Heading right down the sonar line at this point. leave it passive should detect for us to be able to detect. Oh, we might get the northernmost one. We might be able to clip it. But we're probably going to lose our shot at the northernmost one if this doesn't pick it up soon. Tunnel torpedo is still okay. Let's try it active. See what they do when they hear it uh, sonar ping from a torpedo. And the torpedo is pinging. Torpedo in the water. Three torpedoes launched. not either of the ships. The third ping that's just popped up to the south is the new target. Where are you? Where are you and what are you? Sonar ping's just running. Running ahead of our torpedo. The next ping will be just ahead of the detection line again, I reckon. Yep, just ahead of the detection line. It's just in front of our detection cone on the torpedo at this point. I reckon this is a submarine. If it's the Alpha, I'm in trouble, because... I don't know if I'll catch the Alpha in the time that I've got left on this torp. Turn the active off and see whether they're not getting pinged. We have acquired. Oh, active sonar's making the torpedo do the funky dance. The target's just in the head of the detection cone, I reckon. And turning it off is fine. catch him oh shit well we did have a detection on it there via the torpedo that was a Sierra so that's two Sierras down now one Sierra the Alpha and the two Karas are all that's remaining Okay, um, I'm still getting actively pinged. Whatever was pinging us was a fair way out. Shot at these. 
If we can sink them, these are the only two things pinging at the moment. If we can sink both of these, we can leave the mission. Those are the pings of the torpedoes the Sierra launched. Alright, so I notice, uh, I know this may be a little boring just sitting here looking at the screen, but what I'm actually doing right now is just watching these pings and listening to them. I'm trying to hear whether or not they're getting stronger or quieter to work out whether or not these ships, are the speed roughly that these ships are approaching at, you know, and if they're approaching at all. And I'm just trying to watch them to see how they're spreading and how they're moving. Come on, ping again. Come left to zero. All right, let's be close to centered on them. I don't want to risk crossing the wires again like I did last time. So if we're going to engage these two, I want to make sure the nose is pointing pretty close to in between them. Come on, ping, ping, ping. It's a torpedo. Right there. Okay. So now we're aligned directly between the current pings. Wait till this comes all the way around and the rudder to go to zero. She's so slow in maneuvering when she's only doing five knots. Negative nine, negative eight, seven, six, five, four. Distance out. Come on, three. There we go. Now let's go two, two. Beautiful. Right. Let's see what we can see. I've done demos similar to this before in past videos, but I generally always had a, at least some kind of a solution on the target, but this is the other way that you can use the torpedoes, just as, essentially as a remote sonar that happens to explode and kill everybody that it hits. Getting close. Just okay, so they're overlapped and we're going almost straight down the lines. Two torpedoes in parallel always looks great. God, we've done some damage here, haven't we? Alright. Let's make a little adjustment 
to Torpedo 3. Okay, let's adjust 2. Um, not quite yet. So I'm sending these straight down the sonar contact lines. I don't know exactly how far these ships are away. waiting game. Three's following pretty closely. Two's nearly there. Now if one of these grabs a boat I have to grab control of the other one because there is an overlap between the two so there is potential that these two torpedoes could wind up lunking onto the same target and I don't want that. Target 3 zone is moving north, slowly, but it's definitely doing it. Nine minutes ten on Torpedo 3. Torpedo is still at 150 meters. Rather, 150 feet should be close enough to the surface to still attack the boats. I haven't had any problems with them so far. Three's targets move down again. I wonder if the the target that 3 is tracking at the moment is actually circling. Two's target seems to be fairly straight. The 3's has been moving around a little bit and yeah, it looks like it's gone north again. in line again. Yeah, three's target is currently circling. I don't know how far out it's circling, but it is circling. And so as it's going through its circle, the pings are happening at different points, and it's what's adjusting the, um, the return. That Sierra would shut up. Still getting spikes from hostile torpedoes in the water. I wonder if they've dumped more. Three's got a target. And it's heading to the surface, so we've got one of the curas. That is definitely a cura. Odd. 
can't get the torpedo camera under the water here at the moment. That is kind of a cool approach view though. Goodbye, sweet prince. That's one down. We're still ping. There it is. Yet we're still tracking true on two. Four minutes and fifty-three seconds on the torpedo. That was a sharp ping from the torpedo. Alright, let's check the line here. Right. Yep, yeah, still on. Uh, I'm just using the uh, the navigational line here to make sure I've got an accurate bearing of the target. Okay, that was nice. Nearly there. Pretty much on the money, I think. Three minutes on the torpedo. Well, it is not close. Thirty-three kilo yards away at this point. Two minutes forty on torpedo life. If this torpedo detonates and we haven't found the target, then we're getting pings at the moment for probably close to forty kilo yards. So I should be fine to exit the area at this point. There's no way known they're going to be able to hear us. But while the torpedo is running, we'll continue tracking it. Forty-six kiloyards to the current marker. And that was a torpedo in the water. I saw that transient. We are right on target. Um, I'm detecting the transients at this range, by the way, via the passive sonar inbuilt to the torpedo, which is feeding the information down the cable that the torpedo is spooling out all the way back to my submarine. So this should lock in any second. If it's launched the torpedo, it's just uh, just detected this torpedo incoming. So it's just shooting down the long bearing. There's a countermeasure. And come on, detect it. There it is. Ah, okay, it's detected the target and then immediately went into evasive mode to start getting past the countermeasure. Go, reacquired and on target. Surface ship, it's the other Kira.
tracking true. No additional countermeasures yet. Another noisemaker. Not sort of expecting that. Torpedo is in auto evasion mode and turning back to reacquire target. And it's acquired true. Three Utiloids, two Karas, and the Kirov. That's the entire surface fleet annihilated, plus the two Sierras. There is one Sierra and one Alpha somewhere out here. Right, in this case, now we can get the hell out of here. Although, to be fair, neither of these, um... Neither of these Karas were of any particular risk. Or of any particular threat, rather. They were too far away. I'm just going to time accelerate a little bit away, and I'm just waiting for the uh, pulses off of the active torpedo to go away. And at that point, we should be clear. Unless there's a submarine almost directly on top of us at the moment, we have not detected it. And torpedo pulses are gone. No vessels nearby, no weapons nearby, no aircraft, no flooding. Okay, and leave combat. Kiev sunk, Sierra sunk. This is what I was saying. Second Sierra and third Sierra undetected, but we know we sunk one of those. We just didn't detect it before we sunk it. We never detected the Alpha at all. We got all three Utiloids, but one of them was undetected, so it doesn't get counted as a kill. We did detect one of the Karas, confirmed, but we did not detect the second one, but we sunk both of those as well. So yeah, there we have it. And it only took us a little over an hour to do. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. And Twig46, I hope you're happy with my completion of the challenge. Um, I hope you don't mind the modifications that I did to it. I just wanted to ramp it up a little bit. Anyways, ladies and gents, as always, check the video description down below for links to all of my social media, my Twitch, my Patreon, and so on and so forth. And, well... If you liked the video, remember to click that like button, share and subscribe if you would like to see more. And as always, dive smart, dive safe, and I'll catch you in the depths.